All right, uh, I guess we can get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks, thanks for coming in over here. Uh, I'm Amog. I, I work for the CloudStack team in, in Citrix, and uh, I joined the team very, very recently, about six or seven months back after finishing my master's. And I generally work at a, at a layer above CloudStack, building tools on top of CloudStack. And uh, what I'll be talking about over here is uh, is an exercise we, we carried out uh, a little while ago to try and figure out what it takes for someone to create an automated testing environment and, and what are the pain points uh, you face as a developer and how we can address it. And uh, this, this whole thing came out of this, this uh, small exercise we carried out. So uh, what, what I'll talk, uh, talk over here today is Basically, why we need this automated testing environment. Uh, Hugo has set, set some uh, good context with his uh, previous talk, and I'll just build on, on top of that. Uh, for the prototype implementation that, that we had, the architecture and the implementation of it, uh, what it takes to replicate this whole thing in your environment so that you can create your own automated testing setup and uh, test your plugins, your code in an, in an easy way. Uh, a, a small proposal to change uh, how, how things are currently working in the CloudStack dev community to make sure that the code is more stable. And at, at the end, a few enhancements that uh, uh, we have been working on, and in particular, uh, Bharat and Taluri from the CloudStack community have been working on. So to get started, if, 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 you, are, if you have been on the dev list and, and if you have been following CloudStack for a while, uh, you do know that master tends to be pretty unstable at times, especially during the feature freeze and, and when all the merge requests come in. Uh, over time, you see that there are, there are a bunch of unchecked commits that go in. Uh, they, they range from something as simple as a few compilation or build errors or something that breaks a functionality within CloudStack. Uh, currently, we don't have a provision for developer to run his own test branch when he's Trying to, trying to develop his, his own big feature. Uh, you kind of don't know what's happening with respect to the functionality within CloudStack unless you go and merge it, get somebody to run all the testing for you, and that's when you, you figure out some of the major bugs. And as a developer, uh, you'd, you'd rather want it before you come to the, to the merging point. In general, testing is uh, not yet a full-fledged community effort within CloudStack. A part of, a, a part of that reason being, uh, it's, it's very involved to set up the whole cloud stack testing environment. You need a management server, you need the hypervisors, you need storage, you need a networking environment to get everything running. And after that, you can proceed with the testing. And then there's the Marvin framework, which allows you to test everything. And uh, it's, it's currently not very easy to test your plugins uh, very, very, uh, in, in a very efficient manner. So let's say somebody like uh, picking a random name, Open Contrail comes in and they want to contribute to cloud stack. Uh, it kind of makes it difficult for them to test everything functionally and then contribute their code. And they kind of rely on the testing carried out by many of the other folks to figure out what, what, the, what the issues might be. So given, given that context, if you have been on the dev list any time, you do see that every, every often as a community, we stress that we need testing and code quality. And at the end of it, we, we don't really come to a, a conclusion where, you know what, let's go with this, let's have this implementation, let's try it out and let's see how, how it works and as a community try and enhance it and, and, and move forward. So the goals of, uh, of what we are trying to achieve over here is, one, you need BVTs continuously running. BVTs are the basic verification tests that test the, the main core underlying functionality of CloudStack. Uh, you want to enable community testing because, as I said, it's, it's a little difficult setup, and the easier you make it for them, the easier it is for people to chime in, get, a, get in their own hardware, provide test reports to everyone. Uh, you want to work towards keeping the master stable so that it's easier to cut off uh, RCs as, as and when the time is. Uh, as I said, you want, it easy to, to, you want it to be easy to replicate, and uh, one of the goals that we are trying to address in our design is that we want the uh, test runs to be isolated from each other. So what we have seen from, uh, from the testing uh, folks within, within the community is that sometimes there are residuals from one test run to another, and that gives you false alarms. It may give you false results. Sometimes it shows bugs that may not really exist simply because something from the previous test run, a, a DHCP server somewhere or, or, or some kind of a, a small part that is residual, 
and uh, that kind of uh, reduces the confidence in, in the test run. So we wanted to, as a design itself, completely, uh, completely get rid of it. So given that, uh, the architecture of, of the whole uh, prototype implementation, it's kind of done in two phases. If you look at it, uh, even, even, even logically, when, when we want to test something in Cloud Stack, first you need to set up your whole environment, which is going to be provisioning the management server, the hypervisors, as well as the storage and networking. And after that is done when, is, is when you actually get to the functional tests of Cloud Stack, testing your plugins, testing your particular developer code, or whatever your, your goal may be. So it's kind of uh, uh, separated into two logical paths. The first one is coming up with a, a framework for deploying, uh, deploying the whole Cloud Stack infrastructure in an easy and, and uh, in, a, in a fast way. And that's where most of the stock is going to focus on. And once that is provisioned, you go ahead and launch your BVTs and your functional tests. Uh, of course, if the, sorry, if the provisioning of the hardware itself fails, you know that there's something wrong in your, in your infrastructure, in your automation environment, and whoever is going to be the owner of it needs to take the appropriate actions. And that's where the flow kind of branches off. If everything goes fine, you run the BVT. Maybe something breaks with your BVTs. And as a developer, it's very handy to have those uh, management server logs with you, as well as some, uh, sometimes if it's an KVM uh, hypervisor, the agent logs with you as well to try and debug in a fast way as to what exactly went wrong. And uh, as a framework, we want to make sure that, that it gets, uh, gets to the developer uh, as well. And if, if the BVTs pass, then yeah, everything is fine. Whatever was, was committed in the last run is all nice and dandy. Go ahead and put it in your master, and then you can be relatively assured that the master is, is going to be stable. And uh, yeah, if, if you think about it, the, the two-step process is uh, pretty, pretty simple to visualize this whole process. So uh, as I said, uh, phase one, provision the management server from scratch because uh, you, you basically don't want anything from the previous run to, to, be, to be staying on the management server. You, you don't want to just uh, take some hardware, go and uninstall all the YUM packages that were required and then reinstall it because you never know what might be uh, residual. It might be a system VM ISO somewhere. It might be some shell script which was changed later on, some virtual router shell script that was changed and it was just lying on the management server from the previous run, and it kind of does not give you the confidence you need. Uh, you want to uh, provision all the hypervisors from scratch because, for example, for Zen server or VMware, you have many of these tags that are, that are used by CloudStack for, for managing the hypervisor. Just want to make sure that everything is cleaned up. And obviously, the storage and networking has to be, has to be set up. And after that is done, you run the Marvin tests. And uh, uh, the implementation is, is based on uh, Prasanna's effort, who's is part of the Cloud Stack community. So a big, big thanks to him for uh, uh, coming up with the initial uh, design. Uh, moving to the implementation part, uh, it, it is all glued together using Jenkins. Uh, we all like Jenkins as a CI system, as, as Hugo also pointed out. It's pretty, pretty easy to use, set up, plug in, pl plug in different, different things into it, uh, have your own scheduling mechanism, reporting, alerts. All of those uh, fit in really easily. So, so we started off using Jenkins to tie, or tie all the uh, jobs and the implementation together. Now to uh, provision, provision the management server and the hypervisors, you basically need a way to deploy an OS in an automated and a repeatable manner. Uh, Pixie servers kind of solve that problem uh, in, in, in a way. You need, after you have the OS deployed, you need a way to configure the systems. For the management server, you have a bunch of packages. You have MySQL that has to be running. A bunch of ports need to be open so that the API calls can be made. In terms of the hypervisor, if it's a KVM hypervisor, you need the agent installed on the hypervisor, and all, all that configuration has to be done. And uh, uh, provision the storage and networking. And again, as I mentioned, provide, provisioning it in, a, in an isolated manner is something that was important to our, to our design, as explained uh, before. So uh, I'll, I'll just go over uh, the technologies that were involved in, in achieving these uh, three goals while setting up the environment. So uh, we, we, have bought, uh, we have got together a bunch of open source technologies and packaged it all together and tried to make it work and make sure that uh, even if it's somebody who is not really familiar with all these CI technologies or even if you are 
a, a uh, two person, three person team or a developer working on some plugin, you still find it intuitive to, to use all of these things and you don't really have to worry about what goes underneath uh, uh, while trying to set it up. So uh, we, are, we are using Cobbler, uh, which is an open source tool. Uh, IPMI tool is, is used for kicking off the Pixie process. Uh, Puppet is used for configuration management, as, as I mentioned, is, is required for management server and the hypervisors. Uh, we use DNS mask for uh, DHCP uh, management, and, and it's used under need by, by Cobbler. And we use the Squid HTTP proxy server. This is required to maintain the isolated network requirement. And uh, I'll, I'll go over the exact details as to what the role of, of Squid in this, in this whole uh, implementation is. So uh, a quick overview of what the uh, tools do. So Cobbler, it's an open source OS installation server. It uh, enables Pixie booting, to put it uh, really simple. Uh, to, uh, if, if somebody's not familiar with Pixie booting, it essentially allows you network booting uh, in, an, in, an, in an automated way. So you have an IPMI network, you just send a, a call uh, or send a command for, over the IPMI network, a DHCP request is sent back, it is intercepted by some Pixie server running in your, uh, in your, in your network, and it sends the, uh, uh, the init RD images required for, for booting the machine back. So for Cobbler, there are uh, three components. You require, a, you require a distribution, which is the OS you want to install. Uh, you require a profile, which uh, kind of configures the OS in a way that you want. Let's say you want to integrate this with Puppet. You want to set up uh, the NTP server, or the configuration for the NTP server as well. As in, the NTP server is running on some IP. You want to make sure that all the hosts reach, the, reach that particular NTP server. You can use all of those things inside a profile and then package it together. So the distro and the profile kind of creates uh, a, a system that is going to be deployed on some bare metal hardware somewhere. And the system, as is defined by Cobbler, is essentially a MAC address to the profile mapping. So whenever the DHCP request comes in, the bare metal machine is going to send its MAC address. The Cobbler server is going to intercept it, figure out what kind of OS and what kind of profile is, go, is, is to be deployed over there, and just sends it back. Uh, the reason why Cobbler is, is kind of uh, nice to use in this particular environment is it has this concept of snippets which get run as soon as your OS is provisioned. So let's say you want to integrate it with Puppet, you, you want to perform some post installation scripts, you can just put it as a small snippet inside Cobbler and it will just do it for you over and over again. And, and it's very easy to manage all those, those snippets. It's essentially simple uh, shell scripts. So you can set environment properties, if your plugin requires some specific, uh, uh, specific settings to be done, you can just put it as a single snippet associated with the profile, and then, and then you're done. You can just reuse it across all the different OSs you have. And uh, as, 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 uh, it, it kind of makes it easy to manage the whole TFTP and the Pixie environment very easily. It provides a nice command line interface to add, delete systems. Let's say uh, you have a new machine coming in, you want to add it to the system, you can just provide a new MAC address to profile mapping, you're done. Let's say a machine goes down or you need to change the Ethernet card on your RPMI network. It's, it's a single command line that, that is run and it, uh, in, internally Cobbler will make all the required changes for you. So it makes it very easy to uh, manage all these things. Uh, the other things that are involved uh, are Puppet for management server and the hypervisor configuration. So in the prototype implementation we have, there are a bunch of Puppet recipes that have been put uh, out there on GitHub. Uh, that you can use to provision management server on CentOS, on RHEL, hypervisors like uh, KVM, Zen Server, uh, VMware. We are kind of getting to it. It's it's not it's not really there yet. Uh, why Puppet? Why not Chef? Um, Puppet kind of works very well with Cobbler. You just provide a simple snippet saying enable Puppet, and that's it. All the all the machines that you're deploying on will know what the puppet master is, will know what the certificates to be exchanged are, and everything is taken care of very seamlessly in that single line. Uh, we use the IPMI tool to kick start the whole provisioning process. Uh, the squid uh, is, is used as an HTTP proxy server, so what has happened is you have this isolated network that is running all of your testing, uh, testing things, but for, for let's say uh, downloading packages from, from the internet or maybe going to some DNS server somewhere, you many a times need to access the internet. And, and we try to make, the, make sure that the whole testing environment is very controlled. 
it's 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 not being affected by any of the other networks you have running inside your inside your company maybe you have a dhcp server running outside or maybe you have multiple testing environments that are running and we didn't want them to intermingle with each other from the networking side of things so that uh, i mean cloud stack provi uh, uh, creates many complex uh, dns and dhcp and virtual router instances that if they if they intermingle with each other you again kind of lose confidence in the whole uh, test run that you had so we tried to isolate it from other test runs as well as your general uh, infrastructure in the company. Hence, it was all run in an isolated network. But given that the isolated network may, may not have access to the internet directly, we just proxy everything through one server that has access to the internet so that uh, everything else that is required uh, or for everything else that you need, the internet connection works very seamlessly. And uh, yeah, DNS mask was, was the choice to, to use uh, for DHCP. It's essentially, Cobbler works very well with, with DNS mask as well. You can, you might as well uh, replace it with, with bind or whatever is your uh, preferred option. Uh, it's a simple config in Cobbler to change it. So given that you have all these technologies, you put them all together in a single VM that acts as your driver or the cloud, uh, QA cloud VM. Uh, I've, I've, I've spoken about provisioning. I've spoken about the networking requirements and the isolated network. I've not uh, spoken much about storage. So uh, as, as a VM, we also package a NFS server on top of it, uh, which, which sees the system VMs, so that it's easier for you to provision the server. Uh, this is kind of optional, because many of the plugins that come in are on the storage side. You have S3, you have SolidFire, which may or may not require the NFS server to work, work with it. So we kind of wanted to make it as an optional thing so that people are not bound to it completely. Uh, all this implementation is glued together using Python code, so it's really easy to package as and when it matures and kind of integrates well with the whole uh, cloud stack testing uh, infrastructure that we have running in, in the open uh, source community. So the whole implementation, the way it comes together is that, let's say you have three bare metal hosts that you want to provision that will act as your zones or uh, inside the zones as, as hosts in your cloud stack environment. You obviously need to provision a management server. So the management server is provisioned uh, as a VM itself from scratch. So basically all of this, all of this thing is hosted on a Zen server. And on the Zen server between test runs, you just kill the management server VM and spawn up a new management server VM on, for every test run. And uh, uh, the tools that I mentioned above uh, enable you to configure it correctly. Uh, this is how the driver VM looks. You have the cobbler instance running. You have a puppet master running on it. You have DHCP plus DNS, the squid proxy server. It also acts as a Jenkins slave to kind of integrate with any Jenkins master you may have running inside your company or, or in the open source community, as, as is the case with us. Uh, on the networking side, we created a dedicated IPMI network to enable uh, Pixie booting. And on the other side, this is what the uh, isolated test environment, uh, test network looks like. So it's, it's a switch uh, that, that disconnects you from everything else that is out there in your company. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a private subnet. It is used for the management network, the storage network, and, and used by the cloud stack infrastructure as its, as its um, uh, network backbone as well. And uh, yeah, essentially, whenever you send, you kickstart the process, the IPMI, from the IPMI network, you send, uh, send off a command which says, uh, boot up this uh, VM from scratch. It sends a DHCP request, which is intercepted by the cobbler VM. It sends back the images required to boot. And then Puppet takes over and configures it for you. Once all the hypervisors are provisioned and the management server VM has been kicked off from scratch and completely configured, Step one is finished, and you go move on to the step two of actually launching the test using Marvin. And uh, you can see there is uh, only one network that kind of, or, or only uh, one link that goes out to the internet so that it, it kind of isolates everything for you. Uh, so in terms of implementation, as I mentioned, you have a Zen server to, to host everything. Uh, sure. You have created an isolated network. 
So in Zen server or for any other hypervisor for that matter, so the system VMs, mm -hmm. did, did you see a, uh, an issue where system VMs would like to contact the internet and they were failing? Or? Even if they need to, uh -huh. given that we have a proxy set up, okay. and the proxy is set up uh, using, uh, uh, using Cobbler on every machine that we, that we instantiate. So even if they do need it, it kind of gets proxied via the driver VM to the internet. Uh, generally, we, we try to make sure that everything is within within our network itself. Everything is self-contained. Okay. But uh, as of now, we haven't seen any issues with system VM trying so to contact you're, the internet. So you're actually using uh, uh, aliases, not IP address for contact, so because you're using a proxy in between it. So something. So you're using a, a website name or something like for for access. Uh, Suppose for my, for if, you want, if I want to, if the Zen server wants to contact the management server, do you specify the IP address of the Zen server or of the management server, or do you specify the? Oh, we just, we just specify the host name. And host name, host name. Okay, then that's why it gets proxy. Yes. Okay, okay. And, and the DNS takes care of uh, mapping everything. For okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I'll just try to be a little faster now, given that we are running a little short on time. So in terms of implementation, as I said, you have a Zen server to host the, host the whole appliance. You need host for the hypervisor that you're gonna test. An isolated network and the IPMI network and you're more or less done. For implementation of phase two, it starts off by kicking off the Marvin tests. Uh, we kind of keep track of commits from one stable build to another. We define stable build as something that pass all the functional tests completely. So that tells you that this is a stable state of the whole cloud stack code base as such. And then we keep tracking commits from one stable build to another. And between the stable builds, whatever was committed is considered as good enough to be cherry-picked onto the master branch. And there are a bunch of, a bunch of Python scripts that just do the automatic rebasing and cherry-picking of commits for you to kind of ensure that the master is, is stable in most cases, since that was one of the goals you were trying to achieve with this uh, implementation. Obviously, if something fails, it's, uh, if one of the commits uh, breaks the BBT, you send it off to the, to the uh, relevant list saying, hey, one of these commits broke the build. These are the people that made the commits. Somebody please go and check. Uh, the other, other thought we had over here was trying to run a BVT on every single commit. Sorry. Given that BVTs and the setup of the BVTs and the running of the BVTs takes a long time, it would have been kind of, uh, we, would, we would lag from the current commit very easily if, if I mean, you have like at least 20 or 100 commits going every single day, and if you're gonna ha have 100 BBT runs in a single day, you're gonna lag behind big time. So we kind of moved away from that and, and thought, just let's, let's keep it running continuously. Whenever the system is free, start a new BBT run, and then track the commits between stable builds. Uh, so coming to the replication part of it, as, as I said, one of the goals was to make it, uh, uh, enable the co co community to contribute to the testing of, of the system. So if you wanna set it up from scratch, Somebody needs to have all the familiarity with the CI tools that are used out there. You need to be familiar with the cloud stack specifics. What are system VMs? What are virtual routers? What goes where? How do you configure the networking environment? How do you configure storage? Those things can get pretty involved. And uh, there are a bunch of network configs that you go through if you want to create an advanced networking option. How do you isolate with VLANs, blah, blah. And not everybody is as familiar with, with them as such. So uh, what we're trying to do is whatever uh, driver VM we had created with all those tool bases, snapshot it, create it as a VM that can be used as a QA cloud, something like a dev cloud that you can just import and create your own environment. Dev cloud is kind of handy for, for people to run easy, uh, for people to run Zen server tests on. So we were trying to borrow that, uh, that, that concept to the QA as well. So in that case, the uh, the steps become that you load this whole VM on a Zen server, the VM contains all the configs you want, uh, sorry, all the uh, tools you want. You provision an isolated network using a config that we provide. The network uses a 172 subnet, so it's, it's kind of uh, RFC whatever, 1618 or 1918, whatever it is, I don't remember the name, but then, okay. So that, that, that does not interact with the other uh, subnets you might have inside your, inside your company. You add one IPMI network, as I said, Obviously, one, a few things that you need to change are the ac actual MAC addresses of your systems. Uh, you can't know that beforehand for the host, and which is why we kind of went with Cobbler because it provides a one-line command to just change everything for you, so it makes it easy to, to replicate this. You add it to a Jenkins master, which is a simple config on Jenkins side. Uh, if you want to use NFS, you add the NFS volumes. 
we provide a, a common domain name, something like, I, I think, automation, cloudstack.com or something like that. If you want, you can change that in a simple config and everything will be propagated using Puppet uh, uh, from there. And uh, this, this kind of makes it easy to create your own testing environment. If not, and, and if somebody wants to replicate it from scratch, uh, I've, I've put up a wiki which mentions the exact steps and I've provided sample networking configs, DHCP, DNS mask configs, cobbler configurations, uh, the puppet recipes, as well as a few uh, IP tables, or actually the routes that you need inside your host to make sure that everything works fine. I've put it all in, in, in this wiki and in case somebody wants to try it out, please feel free to, to do that. And, and if you have any comments, please put it on the wiki so that uh, somebody else would be benefited from it as well. I already have this documented, uh, sorry? The puppet recipes are in a GitHub account. There's a link on this page to the puppet recipes. Uh, so to keep the master stable, uh, what, we, what we intend to propose is to have some kind of a staging branch in between. All the commits from the developer, they keep going to the staging branch. We keep running BVTs against the staging branch. And as I said, once you have the stable run between commits, just, you just cherry pick or, or rebase everything against the current stable version of the master and push it all to the, to the actual master. So that anybody who wants to try out CloudStack or, or if you want to build an RC on top of it, it kind of eases your, your job a little as a release manager or even as somebody in the community just trying things out and trying if their feature is working well. Um, there, is, there is code in there that uses uh, Python to auto cherry pick and rebase everything. But uh, as of now, the, there's, there is no staging branch for us. So, so it, it's currently disabled in our internal systems as well, the, the prototype system. Uh, one of the pain points is uh, trying to reduce the BVT running time. They kind of take a few hours to run right now. Uh, if you think about it logically, you do not need actual hardware to run all the functional tests. The APIs do not actually need hypervisors or host. You can just run account or, or, or domain commands and, and APIs. And, and many of the tests in, in Marvin, they actually don't require hardware. So there has been an effort going on uh, 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 that, was, that, that is being led by Alex to kind of make sure that most of the things run on simulator so that it reduces the runtime. Yeah. Question, have you tried with uh, hypervisors as VMs instead of uh, bare metal? No, no, we haven't tried that. We wanted to... Open, VMs no, we haven't tried that. That's a good suggestion, but uh, no, we haven't tried that yet. How long uh, approximately does it take for the setup to come up? The setup generally takes about 40 minutes to provision uh, all the hypervisors in parallel to configure the management server. For the system VMs to download, uh, sorry, uh, for, the, for the host to download the system VM templates, start off the system VM and get, get the built-in templates ready. That whole process currently takes about 40, 40 to 50 minutes approximately. Pixie boot should take a lot of time, right? For sorry? The Pixie boot of hypervisor should take a lot of time. It, it does and uh, yeah, given, given that it's all on an internal isolated network, it kind of speeds it up a little, but then you need to check out the latest code base and, and build everything. The cloud stack build itself takes like 15 minutes or so, so, yeah. Uh, so, to this point, I'm actually doing exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. except I'm doing the testing. All right. So I have a bunch of physical hypervisors that are using cloud stack 4.3 as their orchestration engine, mm -hmm. and then I have projects Sure, sure, it's, it's all out there, feel free to. But I, the, like the Pixie part, I see the benefit if you want to do the physical testing, it, but on the other side, it goes to it. Yeah, I also have something similar that I have. So I have Nestor with a set up and I have a VM for the first, first mm -hmm. Sure, I mean, if it speeds up the process and it takes care of all the functional testing, why not? I mean, feel, feel free to add to this and, and uh, as I said, the wiki is out there, feel free to just keep adding your comments on top of it, and then whatever works best for us as a community, we should probably borrow all the nicer ideas. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly go over the enhancements that we're trying to make, uh, better integration with VMware. You see that uh, Ilya has already done some work on top of it that might make things easier. Uh, currently, the system VMs are preceded for a particular release, so we want to make sure that we pull the latest system VM templates as well, or maybe build it, build it in, the, in the environment. The VM size that we want to export as, as the QA cloud is currently pretty big because it contains all the OS and the hypervisor images. 
So we want to, uh, there is, uh, uh, Bharat is working on trying to make it smaller. Uh, let's say you have this deployed and you have a bunch of machines to run uh, tests in, in parallel. Then you should be having some kind of a scheduling mechanism to manage all those resource pools and, uh, and then it makes it easier to parallelize the whole uh, testing environment. And again, Bharat is doing some effort on top of it. Maybe, maybe you'll see a wiki coming up sometime soon. And uh, again, trying to throw it open to developers as a service. Somebody can just come in, say, this is my feature branch. Please run the BVTs. Tell me what's broken so that I can fix it before I break the master and then, uh, and then everybody trying to mingle with 100,000 lines of code that somebody else committed. And yeah, at, at the end, as I said, this is only the first baby step. It's, it's uh, great ideas coming out of it. So yeah, if you have comments, feel free to just post, post it on the dev list and hopefully something good will, will come out of this. And yeah, that's, that's it. Thanks for your time.